Welcome to Going One to One. My presentation is part of K-12 Online Learning Conference's Visioning New Curriculum Strand. I'll be talking about the what's, why's, and how's of going one to one in educational settings and hopefully giving you some reasons to consider doing so. I uh, want to start by thanking Wesley Fryer and the other people at the conference for having me today and allowing me this time to present and I want to thank you for watching. If you happen to be in the greater New York City area on November 16th, please consider attending my school's first ever education technology conference. We're calling it XTech. Registration is free and we'll have presentations from talented educators and major innovators like Apple, Switch Technologies, and Barracuda Networks. To share a little bit about my professional background, I'm currently the faculty advisor of instructional technology at Zavarian High School in Brooklyn, New York, one of the first Apple one-to-one -one schools in the United States. I, uh, I'm excited to say my book, Going One-to-One, -one, iPads and Mobile Computing in the Classroom, should be out this November, so if you find any what I say useful today, please consider checking that out as well. I, uh, I also teach at the college level, and I utilize a one-to-one -one model there, and I don't say that because I think it's important you know it, but I think it's uh, important you know I use laptops in the one-to-one -one model there. So all the information I'm giving here is going to be platform neutral. It should work across just about any device, uh, any laptop, any netbook that you're working with. I've been a classroom teacher for uh, well over a decade, and now I've moved into more of a hybrid position at Zavarian as the uh, working uh, in instructional technology, and that new work informs a lot of what I'll be talking about here today. I'd love to hear your thoughts on anything I say, um, anything that interests you, or anything you want to dispute. Best way to reach me is via Twitter at Fogarty22. You can also email me, but uh, Twitter is a really great way to get in touch with me. And again, thanks for uh, having me, and thanks for watching. So let's get started. My presentation is divided into three distinct pieces. The first aims to define the nature of one-to-one -one computing. Um, they one-to-one -one computing really has become something that everyone talks about, but not everyone can elucidate a clear idea behind or an idea of. So I'd like to be able to maybe give you a little bit of the um, history and uh, some of the inspiration that led us down the road. Also, going to talk to you a little bit about why you should consider going one-to-one. -one. Uh, this is the research that made me a true believer. And I think it's going to uh, at least give you food for thought about ubiquitous computing deployments. There have been quite a few studies on these uh, early, you know, one-to-one -one programs done at this point. So what do they say? What's the early verdict? Third section is all about how we did it, with a focus on how our teachers changed their approaches to lesson planning and professional development. A one-to-one -one, uh, deployment involves some major changes to how everything from seating to test giving is done. Using uh, a host of apps like Edmodo, EduCreations, Dropbox, iAnnotate, Khan Academy, and Ustream, uh, we were allowed as uh, progressive educators to create living, breathing classrooms that don't get locked at the end of the day. So I think uh, talking about reshaping the classroom is a big part of this presentation as well. So um, first question is, what does it mean to go one-to-one? -one? A simple definition of going one-to-one -one would be uh, that one internet-enabled computing device is provided to every student. And then other uh, definitions might include the idea that a technologically progressive student-centered approach to education is a component of one-to-one -one education. The goal behind it is to move students from consumers to curators and ultimately creators. I, uh, I also want to take this all the way back to 1975, actually, as our starting point, because that's when Apple donated some of the first Apple Ones to schools. And uh, other device deployments slowly followed. There were computers in the classroom. Usually they were unwieldy. Um, and then the, around 1985, Apple began developing and deploying its classroom of tomorrow in a handful of schools. Microsoft followed suit a little less than 10 years later with their Anytime Anywhere Learning Initiative. But classroom computing was slow to take off, partially because of the physical barriers created by the cumbersome machines of the 80s and 90s, and partially because the use of the tech was cost prohibitive for a lot of schools. That brings us to Greenock, Scotland. You might not know much of this lovely city, but it's where our story really begins. Cedars School of Excellence in Greenock became the world's first iPad one-to-one -one school just a few months after the tablet was released. So the idea traveled fast from Scotland to Brooklyn. We got the idea from Fraser Spears and the people at Cedars, and um, we were quick to seize on that idea. So quick that we asked Fraser Spears to come speak at our Brooklyn school, 
He、uh, spoke to us in February 2011, and his evangelical approach to one to one innovation in education really inspired us. We came away proud to be trying something different and also empowered by the possibilities. There was little doubt after his visit that we would try to our very best to make it work, and I think we all knew we would make it work. We also knew we were following in some pretty big footsteps. Schools like the Dalton School in Manhattan and many of the best colleges in the country had begun moving towards individual laptop models. The release of the iPad moved schools without serious network infrastructure closer to being able to launch one to one programs.、Um, our school actually does have this serious infrastructure required for such a massive undertaking, but、uh, even one to one cart programs were、uh, made possible by the、uh, affordable nature of the iPad. By following in the footsteps of other innovative, creative people, we created a more active, engaging learning environment. Professional development was an essential part of how we made it work, but so were apps and websites like the aforementioned Edmodo, Evernote, and Dropbox. We also started asking ourselves some tough questions. Like,、uh, firstly, if internet whiteboards,、uh, did, did we really believe they had fulfilled their promise? If slideshows and PowerPoints were really the best way to deliver content, we weren't sure, and even if we should be delivering content in that sense at all anymore. Student centered learning, long a mantra we repeated, became essential to everything we did. After all, ideas age pretty quickly, and the notion of the teacher as font of all knowledge was、uh, hopelessly outdated, but maybe some of our other ideas were too. Our students' workplaces won't resemble the classrooms of the present or the offices of the past, and it's up to us as progressive educators to look forward. Our students are digital natives, entering a world in which technology is a vital part of virtually every field. Howard Gardner,、uh, who I'm sure a lot of people know for his theory of multiple intelligences, wrote that the new technologies make the materials vivid, easy to access, and fun to play with. And they readily address the multiple ways of knowing that humans possess. If we want to shape our course content to fit student needs and the future workplace, I think first we have to reshape content delivery to do the same. If you're wondering how the idea of going one to one took off so quickly, the answer might lie in the results of several years of research. So let's get into what ultimately helped convince me that this type of overhaul would work for our school, and that's the raw data. Some teachers and administrators appreciate the idea of going one to one, but doubt its efficacy in practice. The truth is, teachers, students, and academia are in agreement on this topic, and maybe only this topic. There have been over a hundred studies conducted on one to one computing deployments, and I can't find one that points to any major drawbacks to mobile devices in the classroom. The majority left researchers enthusiastic about the possibilities and impressed with the results. The total number that recommended against ubiquitous computing models? Zero. But you might ask yourself how the students feel about all this change, and、uh, the answers are almost universally positive. Students describe themselves as active and engaged learners in one to one programs. They use the devices for everything from simple homework to gaining a deeper understanding of more complex ideas. They learn, then practice, then master real world skills like multimedia project development, broadcasting, and computer programming. There are countless studies we can point to. One、uh, that's up on the screen right now is the Michigan Freedom to Learn Initiative, which was studied. 90% of nearly 6,000 student participants wanted to continue working in a one to one environment during the next year. Two researchers, Hakan Fleischer and William Penuel, authored meta studies covering two decades of one to one deployments. In Penuel's case, he analyzed six years' worth of studies on ubiquitous computing in the classroom and concluded that, in contrast to how students use technology in other initiatives that emphasize basic skills development or assessment, in one to one initiatives, students most often use productivity and design tools in ways that are integrated into other classroom activities and assignments. The most succinct description of the research might come from Fleischer when he writes that, The researched articles reveal a uniform opinion that laptop programs have positive effects for pupils' learning experiences. Teachers are also on board. They notice increased attentiveness, greater depth of knowledge, and growing self motivation among students in one to one environments. The news in specific subject areas is also really good. English teachers, math teachers, research in almost every subject area indicates that students either are becoming more engaged. Test scores are improving, or other positive outcomes are being reported. 
There are even reports of students struggling with severe ADHD getting iPads for instruction and uh, improving uh, leaps and bounds. Now, that doesn't mean that this is going to happen in every school. No one can promise amazing results because the ultimate arbiters of how your program works is going to be the students, faculty, and administration. But a lot of people are starting to feel like standing in the same place isn't really an option. And the data up to this point indicates that a one-to-one -one program can have enormous benefits. I think this, uh, this last quote sums it up pretty nicely. Uh, this 2007 study determined that, overall, the use of the one-to-one -one laptops appears to contribute generally to the effectiveness of the learning environments per the design criteria of being more learner, assessment, community, and knowledge-centered. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about how we did it and how I would recommend you do it. And the first thing I would like to recommend is that you free yourself from the insane expectations that so many of us put on ourselves as teachers and administrators. We didn't expect immediate effects and instead we focused on creating an effective long-term plan for success. We weren't afraid to make mistakes. Our administration supported our efforts and we had a great deal of professional development which helped create a foundation of knowledge for the faculty to work from. We also embraced new ideas. More importantly, when our new ideas didn't work, we tried and tried until we found something that did. We pushed forward with blended instruction, flipped our classrooms, and created personal learning environments for our students. Blended learning is the term used to describe combining physical and virtual classroom elements to create a personalized learning environment for your students. A basic example of this might involve asking your students to go home and watch a Khan Academy lecture on factoring polynomials the night before a classroom lesson on the same topic. A more advanced approach might attempt a virtual field trip, uh, individualized quizzes for real differentiation, or even an entirely flipped classroom in which what we usually consider homework is completed in class while daily lessons are delivered via the web for a student to view and hopefully review at his or her own pace. It's liberating to know that when the bell rings, class and the ideas contained within it just don't end. And that's a simple distillation of the concept beyond the limitless classroom and the cloud classroom. Our goal is to untether the classroom from the physical space when we talk about blended learning, flipped classrooms, personal learning environments. And uh, all that leads us to this idea of a cloud classroom. And one of the ways uh, we create a cloud classroom is by integrating a, different, uh, a series of different apps, websites, programs, uh, all of which allow us to store resources, offer students ways to access those resources, and uh, even provide different levels of instruction at home or via the device that we've given them. No more forgetting books, no more losing handouts, no more misplacing quizzes. All of that stuff can be handled by storage in the cloud. A cloud classroom extends the reach of your school. Every day's lesson is going to be available on Edmodo or whatever site you choose. I know Nearpod is another competitor. As are the students' grades, homework assignments, and group assignations. The dog isn't going to eat anyone's homework. Student work can be graded and returned via iAnnotate or a similar annotation app, so there's a digital trail for everything students turn in. And everything I'm talking about is available through apps and browsers, so no device is excluded. Dropbox, Edmodo, Evernote, Khan Academy, they're all incredibly useful and incredibly powerful across every platform. So you can crank up your Apple IIe. If it has a web browser, you're good to go. And now that I think about it, an Apple IIe probably doesn't have a web browser. Going one-to-one -one involves creating a student environment that mirrors and improves upon the classroom. I want to thank you for uh, listening to me today. Once again, I'd like to thank Dr. Fryer and the K-12 Online Learning Conference and uh, everyone here today for spending some time with me. If this was helpful, my book, Going One-to-One, -One, iPads and Mobile Computing in the Classroom, will be available in November. Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of the presentations and have a great time.